Hey you guys, it's Starla here and I wanted to talk to you about women's rights, trying to take all our rights away from us and our choices. And I'm very upset over this and I'm very passionate about this. But I also wanted to talk about my grandparents, my grandmas, I should say. You know, how, what they would think. What would they think if they were here right now and could see history from their time to now? And and what would their uh, thoughts be on it? I don't know if you know this, but I've been researching my family tree for a good 25 years. So I consider myself a genealogist so much as have an education behind me to make me a genealogist. But all, all the research I've done on my family tree, and I, I'm pretty good at it. Now, I'm talking about just my grandmas in America. I'm not even going to go back overseas <laughs> where it was really terrible. I mean, it's always been terrible for women. I wanted to uh, tell you one little story about one of my grandmothers to kind of show you that it's not a whole lot different from that era. 1735, I think she was born in Switzerland. And her and her sister were decoyed. Now, I get this information from my history books in Indiana. And I just want to say that when you are researching your tree, it's always good to go to that place where your ancestors come from so you could actually go and look the records up yourself. Uh, when it comes to researching your ancestors, you only get what information somebody's put on the internet about your ancestor. But when you go to a, a local library or you know, from your county, your state, your city, you're going to find little history notes about your family. Remember back in the day when this country was first being developed, people knew that this was a historical event for people to come over to Europe and come to this other country. And they wrote about it. And they would document any little historical uh, tidbits that came along. And it usually was the f rich people. Mostly you'll find a lot of the rich people because they established the cities. They put money into it. They did the courthouse. They built a cemetery. They built a school. So their names are going to be in the history books regardless. The common people, like my people were, <laughs> uh, they get in the history books because of something that happens to them, either great or bad. That's how they get in there. And this is the story of my grandma. I found a lot of this information in the Indiana libraries. But she, her and her sister are kidnapped. They're sent over here. And then the captain has the nerve to sell them when he got to Pennsylvania for their passage. So the captain sells them for their own, you know, to pay for their own kidnapping, pretty much. Now, my grandpa, who was six years older than my grandma, well, his daddy, because, you know, he's still a kid, too, because you figure uh, they went to the farm after they got, when they were bought, and they stayed there until, you know, a few years, until they were old enough to marry, which was about 12 years old. So they could have been 10 when they got kidnapped, 8 and 9, 9 and 10. So let's just say she got kidnapped when she was 10. That meant Grandpa was 16 already. You know, they kind of had to wait till the girl had her period. Once she had her period, she was considered a woman, any, you know. And I guess a lot of women back then had their period at 10. I don't know. They married them at 10, 12. It wasn't considered rape unless they were under 10. But if they were 10 and got raped, uh, nine times out of 10, they were acquitted. They were, nothing was done to them about that. So here she is. They're in a foreign land. She was sold to somebody who's going to be her future husband. You know, that's the only reason they're sold. Now, she didn't make it in history books because the fact was, here you have a girl that's kidnapped, right, and has to pay for her own kidnapping, and then is forced to marry somebody she don't know. Her and her, at least her and her sister were together. They put an article in there in the history books, too, that Grandma could lift two bushels of wheat up on her shoulders. She was pretty strong, strong woman. And they said that when her husband would come home drunk and unruly, she could put him in place. 
they thought that was the greatest thing to write in a history book. And I think it was to deter from the fact that she was kidnapped, had to pay for her own passage as a kidnapped person and forced to marry somebody that she didn't even know. And then he's going to come home drunk all the time, you know, and wants to probably slap her around or whatever. And she stands up for herself. Now, I don't know. I can't find a record of when they act. I mean, I find marriage records, but until I would go to the state, I, I can't see the date they got married. I don't know how old she was when she got married, but I do see that when she had her first child, she was 22. Grandma, if she's seen us today, she'd say, well, that's still happening today. We see this all the time. That they're still trying to kidnap these young girls. And they and the Republican Party thinks this is fine. I I heard a Republican say uh that he would like to lower the age to get married for females to ten. And that's where it comes from. Back in the day, it was ten years old to get married. It moved up to twelve and stayed that way until eighteen sixty one. Eighteen sixty one, twelve years old. Then it kind of went up to 16, but 12 years old to get married. That tells me a lot of, of where the Republicans' minds are at, that they would want to go back. So I think my grandma, who came from Switzerland, would say, there ain't nothing different. I see they're still kidnapping us women and taking us to God who knows where. We have no say in that. So, you know, what, what, what are you trying to show me? Because it's making it harder for you to vote, so eventually we're not going to be able to vote at all. They're going to take all that away from us. They're going to, they want us back to that, you know, I kept thinking the 50s. No, they, they want to go back. They want to go back to the beginning of America, where even on the census, women don't have a name. You know, it's very difficult to find women here, I wrote a little, little notes here on it. Let's just break it down here, okay? Your 1790 census was the first census taken in America. And on that census, it would only have males 16 and older. And then they would have free females. All the females are lumped together. Free males are only 16 plus. And then they would give the total. 1800... 10 years later, they actually would put an age group. So you would have minus 10, 26 to 44, uh, 10 to 15 for women was also added in there. The men didn't have 10 to 15. And then they would have a, a total and they would also put how many were over 25. So you could kind of see who was the mom and dad or maybe grandma and grandpa living there. 1810 sexes, they would have 0 to 9, 10 to 15, 16 to 25, and plus 45. 1820 also added uh, at the bottom, they would have a total of all persons, white, slaves, colored, and of other. That's what they listed on there. So from 1830, they listed free whites slaves and free colored so they listed three things they changed the wording as all per, uh, of uh, all people 1840 they added who could read or write 1850 there were names male and female 1870 the age was added 1880 a relationship to the head of you know the household was added so from 1790 to 1880 almost 100 years before you know women well actually 1850 60 years took 60 years so they could add female names to the census so my point is when women came over here Either we were forced over here or we were enticed. They'll give us free land because, you know, women couldn't uh, own land on their own. So they would entice women and say, hey, you know, if you come over to America and set up housekeeping, it's, we'll give you some land. And so, you know, women were like, oh, I get some land finally, you know. So they would either entice them. They would force them over here by kidnapping them. A lot of women came over here as indentured servants. You know, it was very difficult for women unless they had money. If you had money, you probably got by a little bit better. In conclusion, I just want to say that our grandparents, our grandmothers fought for us to get rights, I mean, women didn't even have a name in 1790.
But right now, the Republican Party wants to take our names away. They want to say, hey, you're not worth the time to take your care of your own body. You can't take care of your own body. So we're going to make the government take care of your body because you don't know how. You don't know how. And I think the whole goal of, of the Republican Party is to go back to this, 1790, where we have no names, no ages, no relationship, and you could rape us at 10 years old and get acquitted for it. Only if you rape under 10 that you may get the death penalty. And I think that's what they want to go back to, having a marriage at 10, 12 years old. I mean, it's just insane. To me, they don't want to move us back to the 50s. They want to move us back to 1790. And that is not acceptable. Women, we must stand up to the Republican Party and say, we will not, we will not go back in time. You need to think of all your grandmoms, grandmothers, that the stuff they went through. And if you were a grandma of color, your stories are worse than my stories. They're, they're a lot worse. And, you know, I've just got a few that I see in the history books because, like I said, they don't write about women. Unless they did something great or something tragic was ha happened to them. They might want to live here because the conveniences are better. You know, you got indoor plumbing. You know, you got heat. You could cook inside. You got nicer beds to lay on. You got better clothing for yourself. I think they would enjoy a lot of that stuff. Just the basics. You know, they would be in awe for all that. But as far as how men are treating women, they would say, oh, that's the same. That hasn't changed. Why hasn't that changed? Why haven't you guys changed that? You've changed all this other stuff. And you could read about women that have changed a lot of our technology. Why couldn't they change this? A lot of women, we need to get out there and fight for our rights. We are entitled to be here just like anybody else, regardless of what we look like or who we are. The Republican Party needs to get off of this shit about taking us back to 1790 when we had no name. That needs to stop. So I, I encourage all the women to go out there and vote because when they start talking like this, they're crazy. So we can be stronger as women, you know. We need to stand up for ourselves, get this stuff going. So I encourage everybody to go out there and vote if you haven't voted already to get the crazies out. I urge you to vote Democrat because... If not, we're going to be fighting with the you know Republican Party forever about the stupid stuff. Uh, they have no policies. They don't want to change nothing. The only only thing they want to change is put women back to 1790. You know they want to just put us all over the hide us. Get rid of us. You know we're in society. We've always been there, but they don't want to see us, hear us, or talk to us. They just want the men to be in charge, and we got to stop that. So until next time, until I get another thought in my head that I think I should discuss with you, I'll talk to you later, alligator. Bye.